Grenades have been used for centuries and would become a standard part of a modern soldier's gear in the 20th century. Out of all the pieces of equipment that the German military used during the Second World War, perhaps the most easily recognizable would be the steel hand granite M24, a stick grenade that has become an iconic image of the conflict. The origins of the M24 began in the trenches of the First World War. During the fighting, Germany experimented with a large variety of grenade designs and in 1915 issued its troops the first stick grenade in its arsenal, which was updated in 1970. In 1924, the basic concept of the stick grenade was refined further. The explosive head was reduced in size and the attached belt clip was removed, since the grenade could easily be carried tucked into webbing or a belt with no clip needed. With these changes, the M24 came into being and would be utilized by the German military during the Second World War. The name steel hand grenade is a German compound word, meaning stock hand grenade. The nickname Potato Masher was first coined by the British Army during the First World War after its resemblance to the kitchen tool, and the name stuck to all subsequent stick grenades. Contrary to popular belief, the M24 stick grenade was not the only grenade in use by the Germans. They also used large numbers of the M39 iron hand granite, which means egg hand grenade, a weapon that lacks the wooden throwing handle of its more famous contemporary. Since its introduction in 1924, there have been many variants of the M24 that have entered service. In 1939, the number 39 Iber hand granite or smoke hand grenade, which instead of TNT contained a mixture of zinc and hexachlorothane, which produces a billowing cloud of smoke and was used both to conceal movements of German troops as well as a signaling device. By 1943, the war had turned against Germany and German industry was having difficulty keeping up with the demands for munitions. The result was the Model 43 steel hand grenade, a much simpler design. Unlike the M24, this latest version was not ignited with a lanyard through the handle, but was attached to the top of the grenade, making the grenade head self-contained, similar to the M39 egg hand grenade. The handle was added on simply as a way to carry or throw the grenade not a functional part of its operation. There were also variants which were used for training, and a cult or cold version which was modified for use in extreme cold, after many standard grenades failed to function on the Eastern Front. The M24 weighs in at about 130 pounds and has a length of about 14 inches. The explosive charge is about 6 ounces. The blast radius of the M24 was around 12 meters or about 40 feet. The grenade is not a fragmentation grenade, which inflicts casualties by sending shrapnel in multiple directions. Instead, the stick grenade relies almost entirely on the force of the explosion to cause the damage, making it more of a concussion grenade. As a result, the M24 was most effective when used in an enclosed space, such as a vehicle or inside a small room, rather than out in the open. Later on, special fragmentation sleeves called splitter rings or splinter rings could be issued. These were cylinders that could be fitted over the head of the grenade that could be secured in place with metal clips to prevent it from falling off. Like its predecessor, the steel hand grenade M24 is a cylinder made from sheet steel filled with an explosive charge of tritrotoluene, which is more commonly known as TNT. The explosive head is attached to a hollow wooden handle with a threaded metal attachment. Inside the head is a cavity where the detonator would be fitted. The fuse would be connected to the detonator and attached to a lanyard with a laid ball. The lanyard would run down the length of the hollow wooden handle at the end of which was a porcelain ball. The handle is sealed off with a threaded metal cap which was lined with a spring tension cardboard disc to prevent the porcelain ball from rattling and further seal off the cap from the environment. To use, the metal cap at the bottom would be unscrewed, exposing the porcelain ball. The user would then pull the lanyard. When pulled, 
An abrasive wire would rub up against a friction-sensitive compound, creating sparks which would ignite the fuse. Generally, the fuse length would only be around 4-5 seconds, enough time for the user to throw it at a target. Once the fuse burned the allotted time, the detonator would activate, setting off the grenade. The detonator would be issued separately from the rest of the grenade, and the troops who used it would have to unscrew the head of the grenade, insert the detonator, and reassemble the grenade before use. This was done as a safety feature to prevent accidental detonations. The majority of stick grenades would be used for their intended purpose, thrown at a target one at a time. There are instances, however, when more substantial firepower is needed. One method of maximizing the destructive potential was called the Gebauter Ladung, or concentrated charge. Also known as a bundle grenade, a standard grenade would have the heads of a number of other grenades attached to it, creating a much more powerful blast when detonated. Any number of heads could be attached, though normally six heads would fit around the primary central head. German field manuals described an official proper way to attach the heads together, though troops in the field would simply bind them together in any way that kept the bundle from falling apart before being thrown. Any type of binding could be used, including metal wire, twine, rope, telephone cords, barbed wire, or anything else that was at hand. These bundle charges were used for heavier work, such as destroying bunkers and pillboxes, anti-tank uses, or anything else that required more firepower than a single grenade. The obvious disadvantage was the weight, which limited the range the improvised weapon could be thrown. The Germans also made use of the Geschreckt Ladung, or elongated charge. This would consist of several grenade heads attached to a rod or other elongated structure, all facing the same way. At the end would be an intact grenade. Much like the Allies' Bangalore torpedo, this would be used as a demolition charge to clear obstacles. Like all grenades, the M24 could also be attached to a tripwire for use as a booby trap. Incidentally, though they were often attached to items like flags, weapons, and helmets, targeting those looking for an easy souvenir, the grenades themselves became collector's items and would be taken by allies as trophies albeit with the taken by allies as trophies albeit with the explosive hopefully removed main advantage the m24 stick grenade has over more conventional grenades such as the american mark ii pineapple grenade or the british mills bomb was its wooden handle which makes it easier to grasp and throw due to the leverage created by the attached handle the grenade could be thrown a longer distance, which is always a benefit in a combat environment. When used on uneven terrain, the elongated shape would also prevent the grade from rolling after it had landed, missing its target, or worse, rolling back towards the thrower. Additionally, as discussed earlier, stick grenades can be bundled together, creating a more powerful explosion. There are some disadvantages, however. The most obvious is the bolt. A stick grenade takes up much more space than a conventional grenade, meaning that troops could equip fewer munitions at a time. The grenades are also larger, making them easier to see, giving troops on the receiving end of a grenade attack more of an opportunity to take cover, evade, and given a convenient throwing handle, possibly throw it back. It's also more complex to use, first needing the metal cap at the base to be unscrewed, exposing the activation lanyard, then the lanyard pulled before throwing. In contrast, other grenades would simply require the safety pin to be pulled before throwing. The difference may only be a few seconds, but on a chaotic battlefield, such small amounts of time can make all the difference. Overall, the M24 steel Han grenade was innovative, building on earlier attempts at grenade design. But the lessons learned during the Second World War would render the concept obsolete. With the end of the war also came the end of the use of the M24. 
as well as the concept of stick grenades in general, the disadvantages outweighing their benefits, relegating this easily recognizable piece of military hardware to the annals of the annals history. Until next time, peace out.